The swords collected by American soldiers in the recent war were regarded in many different lights. Most soldiers thought they were collecting only souvenirs, and seldom did they ever suspect the true value of the swords. Immediately after a sensation of hostilities, swords in Japan were confiscated, the swords were confiscated by the Allies. Allies means America, Britain. Uh, later, however, some of those artistic or historic value were returned, um, and those were only from, meaning the Hatos were returned to families if they could be found that had political power, wealthy, but if you didn't, they weren't. That's why America has more Nahantos than Japan does. Japan through the world, an impressive example, of special workmanship, accumulating in fine art. When the atomic bomb fell on Hiroshima, the samurai sword lost its prestige as a weapon, but still remains the most perfect steel sword in the world. The Damascus, the Toledo, Swords of Folklore, Excalibur, Blade of English, Literature could be in way, no way, compared with the workmanship and the quality of the steel that went into the manufacturing of the samurai sword. This is a good book for beginners on if you own the Hantos or don't. This is by John Yamato. John Yamato's reason why there's Nahato still circulating in America that have not rust and been destroyed, we owe a lot to him. I read this part because not only did uh, comment on that you want the tank to rust, but that he said, why would, like, oh, dude, you're so stupid. Why would the country that actually made the the swords not have the most swords in their country. Well, because World War II happened and uh, it was total surrender. And uh, we told them upon surrendering, unconditional surrender, turn in all your swords because they were afraid of uprising. I don't really agree with it. And the, uh, a lot of Nahatos were destroyed and lost to history because of this. So that is why there are more swords in North America. It, it, it gets to me. Now, I don't know if this, as doing this for fun, either way, or being very ignorant and talking about something he or she does not know. Now, I want to make it clear. I don't, I'm not a specialist in the Hantos. I'm like a preschooler in the Hantos. But in preschool, in the Hanto realm, one thing you know is that the tang. You don't want the tang to deteriorate. Why? The tang is the most important part that's going to identify the Nahanto. It's going to tell you what year and what, what forage it came from. And I'll show you an example. Why? Example, I had someone that reached out to me wanting to get their wakasashi identified. And that's a story by itself. I think they have a nice, nice katana. If they want to, I will tell the story just to show how complex the katana realm is. But you see this? Every smith had a file. And they didn't have machines like this beautiful thing here that Sino Swords does. They make some beautiful, I mean, this is nice quality workmanship, but they would have little file marks, little lines from the files because they, the smith would profile the tang. Sometimes even the smith would make a little indentation somewhere on the tang. And it would look like a scratch, but it's actually a secret mark because the smith is so famous to prevent forgeries so that when it was evaluated, they, they could see that mark and say, that's not my sword. I didn't make that because my mark, little scratch mark, would be right here and it would run down left or whatever. Little things like that. This person should know that. And if that rusts and you can't see those file marks, good luck trying to have the Hanto identified. Good luck. Because they have those files and they have the measurements and they, they could take your thing and compare it and all this is in their database and they, they, they 
could do all that stuff. But without the Tang, that's the most important thing. When you have a Nahanto certified, guess what they do? Upon the piece of paper, you get a tracing of the Tang. Not the whole sword. Why the Tang? So that way, if you go to sell it, you could show the Tang to the other person and they know that that paper belongs to that sword. However, if you got it papered and you allowed it to rust over since it was papered and it they can't it doesn't match up to the the tracing, well you lost a bunch of money. So that's what bothers me is that people make these comments. And some people could have a trusting nature and actually believe these comments and you know I don't I don't know about other people but to me Trust is not something that you throw away. It's not cheap. It, 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 to me, it's valuable. So uh, I am just going to mention that, and that's all I'm going to talk about there. Trade Nahato 101. Now, to really get into the Nahato realm, and I'm not exaggerating, you have to study for years and years. It is so complex. There is so much to study. Uh, not to mention understanding the, how the system operates. And there are some problems going on in the system that we have right now. Uh, there's, there's some corruption. There's, there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, hypocrisy in the Katana realm. Uh, what do I mean? I believe, number one, if a person is giving you a value looking at your blade, and I have a collection, right? And you bring in my, your katana, and, you, and I'm the one that's going to put a price tag and value on this. If I devalue yours, that increases mine. I believe you should not be able to own any Nahato whatsoever if you have any affiliation to put a value on a katana. Period. Period. There's too much room for human to be human. Too much temptation. And this is not only my stories, but I have seen other people come up to me, I don't know how many times, give me the same story or something different that lines up with the same thing with my experience. Another thing, too, is that you, there are shysters out there. There is a lot. You have to be careful. Uh... And I say eBay is one place because eBay could track a person's record where if there's complaints, you would see that. And you got people on there that's been selling for 10 years and has like four stars, you know, has a good rating. That That's good. It's better than finding someone randomly off the street and then not knowing nothing about them. Okay. So one thing you have to be careful for is posting your Nahanto on a form. Because there are people that will rip you off. And the name of the game is to this. I will message you on your post. And I would give my number and say, hey man, call me about your Nahanto. I'll tell you about it. So then you call me and I'm going to tell you. Your Nahanto is probably worth about $20,000. Listen. Don't tell nobody that you have this, but I know some buddies that does some polishing and, and they make sure Saya is because you don't want that in the Saya. And that's true, but it continued to rust. Um, oh, we'll have it remounted and everything. And I'll do it for about 2000 3000 4000 Depends how stupid they think you are or how much money you got. When the Nahato is only worth about $900. So they make a commission off of that. So if you gave them three thousand, they take eight hundred dollars out of that and uh, send them to their buddies, and then they'll send you back your freshly polished Nahanto that uh, was over appraised and uh, overcharged for the work. So you have to be careful about that. Uh, another thing you know that I've seen is uh, that I'd recommend is the rule of three. When you get in the hot toe, you know, you could send it off to people, uh, at least I do, 
Uh, I'm lucky to have that ability where I, ha I have uh, around three or four people that I could send stuff to, that I could get things translated, uh, people that have done lectures, people that have doctrine in Asian antiquities. Uh, Bob Benson, you could email him. He'd be glad to help identify school, the forge in the era. You have to send them pictures and measurements, uh, um, measurements mainly from the Kasaki tip down to the habaki, then you measure the tang down and you send close-ups of the tang because of how special the tang is and identifying it. Which is why you don't want it to rust, so don't listen to morons, okay? Uh, but I play the rule of three and because my experience and other people where they send it to professionals that, that look it over and say, yes, this is this old and it's by this smith. I have gotten the hot toast where one guy says one thing, then send it to another guy and they say another thing. That's a problem. And one, that difference could be about $5,000. Which one's right? So if you send it, don't tell the other person, the next person, what the first person said. Don't say nothing. Let them come to their own conclusions. And if you get the same thing, good. If you're getting different dates and forges, you're probably going to want it to have it sent off to Japan. Uh, another thing, and this is just my opinion, not some things were facts about World War II, uh, about the Tangs, fact, but this is, you know, talking about my opinion. Uh, I believe that people don't wear this, that for a price that they're paying for mass production katanas, they could buy, in some cases, less. For less money, they could buy a genuine Nohanto. And I think that there's a very systemic problem in the appraisal market because, again, these people collect and devaluating other katanas. It's not saying like, uh, say, they got great katanas and what you got is a decent katana it's not great but it's decent it's not garbage either you know you could have something that's 800 years old uh example like a friend of mine a couple weeks ago came over he was looking at one of my katanas and it was dating now depending how old the katana is japan went through a very brutal bloody warfare i mean civil war there was just war after war after war after war there it was a a power vacuum that was just recycling over into a certain person appeared in Japan and got everything situated in peace. Uh, then the katana became more a decorative thing. But uh, he asked, he said, uh, I, I said, I wonder if this cut anybody down. And I was like, well, being that age, it's not a question if, it's a question how many people it cut down. Uh, so, you know, it's something about history and it's weird that you could like get a World War II helmet and it's just that old in World War II and it's worth more than, uh, a Nahanto that is 600 years old, uh, and has been in several wars and battles and, you know, something's wrong. And especially about the polishing part, because what I'm seeing a lot is people getting katanas that they're appraising that a polished job should run about $800 to 900 okay? And they're evaluating their swords and their sword, well, your sword's about worth eight dollars $700. So people are not going to want to invest in something that costs more or the same as the value of their they're not hot to. That's not right. There's something, again, when it costs more to have it polished than a blade that is that old and has that much history, but a World War II helmet could go be valued at 20 times, 30 times more, but yet something that's also been in a war, it's Ganto mounted maybe, it's an ancestral blade that's that's seen several battles that's been around since the medieval ages. 
and you're going to say that the polishing costs more than the value of the, it. There's there's a problem, and I it, I believe it's just people in that position owning Nahatos that should not be allowed to because if they devalue the the other katanas and they collect the really elite ones that drives their prices up they're controlling the market you know and uh like the stock market we have laws against that because people do that we found out that people do that they just too much of it goes on you know you can't uh you can't own a stock and uh and and control the price it just to me it, it's just obvious but uh I think some changes need to happen. I really do. Because a lot of Nahatos are being lost to rust. People are letting them rust away. And if they touch the katanas to do anything to prevent it, to, to get the rust off of it, to save it from future generations, you will actually have polishers. And I'm not the only one. Through my collection, I have Nahatos that had pitting where polishers would not touch the katana because they could not get a perfect polish now however they said the blade is not worth the same value as polishing and if you go to tell them I don't care still want to polish they will still say no that doesn't make sense so they say they have the utmost respect for Nahato but they will let it rust away they will let it fade and just now I don't know about you my friends but the person that would not let the Mahato fade away, that would step in and do what they can to save it and preserve it, is the person that has more respect for, for the blade. Talk is talk. Uh, so there's there's a lot of fascinating stories in the Nahato realm. It's not all bad, and it's not to say that all people in the Nahato realm are bad, but you have to be very careful. You really do. Uh, it is a lesson, and that's why I try to share what I did, you know, because, uh, you know, that market game where they tell you you're Nahatos, I, I almost went through that. I did. I was believing this guy. And then, uh, luckily, someone pulled me aside and sent me, you know, saying, hey, this guy is known, you know, whatever, his father will used to do this. And, you know, these people make businesses based on doing that overvaluing the, the katanas i think they're undervalued anyway but uh what they're doing is dishonest and uh, uh there's a lot of that going on and it just doesn't, doesn't stop there it doesn't uh sometimes uh i have seen this happen you're talking about humans being humans and uh, say, like, I've been looking for a specific smith and, like, the first generation from the forge. Meaning, like, not the apprenticeship, you know, third, fourth, you know, generation, but the, the original smith that made the forge. And I've been looking and looking. I couldn't find it to my collection. And then this guy finds it in a rummage sale or whatever. And he's like, what is this? And he knows who the smith is, and he knows that that is a, a priceless blade. No, it's a forgery, or or you know, or the the say it's somebody else. I've seen that happen. I've seen Nahatos labeled as forgeries and found to be genuine. I have seen cases where Nahatos were labeled as genuine and found to be forgeries. It happens. I had seen people in the upper echelon ranks of the Nahato realm not know, thinking that the 13th century was the beginning of the Nahato, you know, like, you should not be, they didn't, they weren't doing the paperwork, or, but they were one of the people that some, you know, people were turning to uh, for questions. You should not be giving any type of questions when you don't know the dawn of the katana, you know, the era, the history, time period. If if you don't know the 101 class, then, then you know, but there's a lot of that going on. And that's why I'm taking the time, because someone's commenting on the video saying, oh, uh, it, it, Japan has more Nahatos. Uh, America doesn't have most Nahatos. You know, they do. Sorry. I, I don't know what else to say. Look it up. Google it. Buy a book. This book right here will tell you. You know, you don't want to tang to rust either. You don't. 
You want to preserve it. You don't want to use hard chemicals on it. Dish soap. You could use Dawn on dish soap. Do you know like when they have oil spills and the oil gets on the animals and the birds? You know what they use on the animals? Dawn dish soap because it's so gentle and it's made to remove oil. Okay. So, and then you oil it. But you also have to be careful. Some people, preserve, you know, choose to use the uh, koji or whatever traditional type of oil. Uh, sometimes looking for that could be hard because a lot of the oil out there is knockoff oil. It's not the real stuff. So it, it really is. It could be a nightmare. Uh, I, I can say that this is a buyer's market. It's not a market to sell right now. Uh, if you're looking for Nahato, now's the time. I, I don't think you'll ever get greater than this. I mean, you could get, they're just underpriced. They are. They are really just way underpriced. So if you're looking to buy one, uh, add it to your collection. Uh, now's the time. I would recommend not selling until things get situated. But uh, that is it, my friends. And again, uh, I want to make it clear. I do not know everything. Uh, but I have some stories to tell. I really do. I really do. Uh, it's stories that other people told me. But uh, if you do have any Nahatos, like I said, you want them reevaluated. All I need is some measurements and some photos. I'd send them off. If you need something translated, if you got a surrender plate or a me signature and tang, it pays to double check. Uh, that's that's the experience I've learned from my process of uh, collecting the hantos. That's like a golden rule. Uh, or you never had the ability to ever have a professional look at it. I'd be glad to send it off to my friends, have them look at it and send you the info. I'm not going to charge you any money like that. Just I just do it. I, I love, you know, like the other person, trying to help the other person out the other day, seeing the pictures of the, the Wakazashi. You know, it's beautiful. It, it's, it's looking at something. It's historic. It, I don't know how to tell you. And it's always a good feeling to help someone um, identify something and get closer to that piece, you know, where they're trying to solve the mystery and you you help them get closer to that and it's always a cool feeling so uh i'd be glad to help my friends if you got anything like that so as always my friends keep it sharp keep it oiled and i will catch you on the next video if you got any questions about the hot toes i will try to answer if there's any other questions i could maybe ask my friends but again i'm not like you know I'm really just a beginner. I really am. And there's so much to learn. There really is. It takes years and years. So uh, as always, keep it sharp, keep it oiled. And till then, my friends.